Kathy Alice Brown is a 20-year Silicon Valley veteran and can speak both geek and business fluently. For the last five years, she's been an SEO and web traffic expert that has advised top brands on their online strategy. Now she works with entrepreneurs as their online marketing secret weapon by reshaping their online presence so that they get a steady stream of clients from their website even as they sleep. Oh, boy, Kathy Ellis, I'll tell you something. That is something I dream about. <laughs> How are you today? <laughs> I'm doing great. Thanks for having me. And um, let me tell you, you're not the only one that dreams of that. <laughs> <laughs> well, you know, um, I, I don't like technology. I have to be honest with you. I don't <laughs> like it. I like what it does, you know. And uh, But it takes me a long time to understand how and what. And frankly, I don't want to clutter my mind with it. So if someone can show me how to do something very quick and easily, that's great. But uh, And it's wonderful that you can speak both geek and business fluently. I mean, that's just a gift. So I guess some of the questions that we have are why – why do business owners struggle with getting traffic to their website? I'm reading a book right now um, that talks about, you know, fast starts and, um, you know, getting getting online right away even before everything is ready because the first to the plate is the one who succeeds. So why do business owners struggle with getting traffic? Yeah, and just let me comment on that fast start. Um you know, I came out of the software world where, you know, we would test and test and test before we would actually release a product. And really, when it comes to online marketing and websites, it really is a matter of kind of leaping before you're quite ready because you want to get that feedback on whether your efforts, your online efforts actually work. Because if you wait to perfect it, you might have fi figured out you've gone down the wrong path. And, you know, well, that's what he says. That's what he says in the book. He says, we do it because your audience will tell you where your mistakes are so you can correct them. And that's one of the points he makes. He says, most software companies test, 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 and by the time they're done, they're behind the eight ball. So uh, what you're saying is what something that he declares in his book. Yeah, absolutely. And it was definitely a transition I had to make in corporate. Um, you know, especially, you know, I was, I was the sort of geek that was implementing what the marketers needed. And, uh, you know, half those marketing programs were canceled. So we learned really quickly not to do a perfect job. <laughs> you know, we, if, if, it w if it was successful, we would go back and enhance it. But, you know, <laughs> we learned pretty quickly that, like, you know, half those marketing prep, because they got feedback that it wasn't successful. And, and I think, you know, that's true with business owners is that they, 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 you know, they do have that perfection mindset when it comes to a website. I can tell you mine are not perfect at all. And, you know, they, they do all this effort and they do all this effort and then they think they're done. Oh, wow, I finally launched it. Now I'm going to get all these leads. And that just doesn't happen. And, you know, then they think, well, maybe I need to fix my website in some way. You know, maybe the colors aren't right or maybe my copy isn't quite right. And, you know, um, or maybe there's technically, technically something wrong with their website. And, you know, for 15 percent of cases I see, um, there might be something technically wrong, you know, that Google doesn't like it or something like that. Uh, but a lot of them, they've kind of got, they've kind of gotten into the ballpark, and it's really the case that they need to do that marketing to get that feedback, and that involves online activities beyond a web website. Well, that's true. That's true. So, so what are some of the ways you think people need to take? What are some of the ways to get traffic to a website? Well, there's lots of ways, um, and they all have their pros and cons. Um, um, the three main ways is, the first is um, partnering up with like a, jo a joint venture partner and have them email their list and, uh, you know, have a link that goes to your website. You know, you know permit, make an offer of some sort through a JV partner, and that's actually one of the fastest ways to get traffic. Um, of course, there's always paid traffic. 
Um, so Facebook ads are really popular and it doesn't take a lot of money to get started there. And then there's always um, search engine optimization, SEO, and that's really the slowest ways. I like to think of that as more of a supporting way for a lot of entrepreneurs um, rather than what you lead with. Well, that's interesting that you say that because people still talk about SEO all the time. So is it still relevant? Is it still that important? People talk about having, you know, the keywords in your in your uh, headline on the website, in your in your um, uh, list of uh, things that you do. I mean, how important is SEO today? Well, the, the landscape has changed pretty darn drastically. Um, you know, a lot of things that we used to do don't, don't work anymore. Um, I think basic SEO is still important. Um, you still uh, want Google to be able to crawl your site, um, and, and I still see sites that um, really break that. Um, and, you know, I think the copy on your websites, you know, your title tags, your meta tags, and the copy on your website, it needs to match at least somewhat to the searcher's intent. Um, so I see... Uh, I think it's important to use nouns in your copy. So Google, Google isn't smart, but it's not like incredibly, you know, it's not like us, you know, it doesn't intuit a bunch of stuff. So you, you definitely need to call out what you're talking about. And hopefully those terms, you know, whether it's dog training or whatever it is, and hopefully those terms match up what searchers are actually typing into Google. I would say SEO is definitely still relevant. I definitely do believe that you need some um, sort of a collection of foundational um, articles on your site um, that address the top questions your prospect might have. But I, I think if, unless you're a larger site that has a lot of pages, um, it's something that should work in conjunction with other online marketing activities. So why why do you recommend keyword research for sites that uh, are not I using it? I recommend it because it really is part of market research. You got to know your prospect. You got to get inside your head. And you know, I even recommend you go so far as build a little avatar. You know, this is Fran. She's a freelance writer. She's looking for you know technical technology help. You know, and and you almost really have to have that picture of your prospect. And that's something you can refine over time. And the reason why keyword research is really important is you need to know the language that your prospects, um, your you know, prospects, prospective customers or clients use to describe what they're looking for. Well, I think that's true. I, I, I actually created three separate avatars because I feel there are three separate um, uh, types of women who might be approaching my site. So I've done three of them, you know, and uh, uh, it gets a little bit hairy that way, but there really are three different avatars. So what do you look for when you look at a site? Um, there's a couple of things I check for in my tune-up services. I, I you know, I, I I mean, if you're not ranking for the, your brand or your name, I mean, that's usually an indication that something's wrong. I mean, it's tougher to rank for, you know, a non-branded keyword. Um, but, you know, just putting aside, you know, maybe some technical problems, um, I would say the first thing I focus on is to check the benefits to the visitor, visitor are very clear. Because a lot of people just list their services, but they don't really list the benefit those services have. Um, like, what am I going to get from that service? And again, that it's in line with searcher intent and it kind of matches up with um, keywords um, and language that a searcher or, you know, someone who came to your site via an email, um, the language they would use to describe what they're looking for. So um, what is a top question that you get about online marketing? It's always about how can I get leads? <laughs> it's always, you know, I just did a yeah, survey. It's an interesting it is. And, and so whether, whether you're working with a, a, a corporation or an entrepreneur or a small business owner, it's always how do I get leads. It, 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 it always how I get leads. I, I mean, it, one thing I find interesting is there's a lot less emphasis on how to convert those leads, which I think is also really, really important. But yeah, I just ran a survey on my list. And again, that was the top question. How do I get leads? That's my top concern. 
Isn't that interesting that, uh, yeah, you know, it's a very good, very good point, Kathy Ellis. It's, uh, it's, um, <laughs> It, people don't worry about conversion. Just how many leads can I get in? The problem is a lot of people leave those leads in the in the funnel. They never get to process them because all they're interested in is how many can I gather. But they don't necessarily have a follow up campaign or or something that that will convert them over to a real customer, not just a prospect. You're absolutely right. So so what about offline marketing? I've got my own opinion on this, but I, I want to get yours. Do you think offline marketing is dead? Oh, no, not at all, um, I, I, especially if your business has any sort of local presence. I mean, even if you don't, you know, you are, you know, you can work from anywhere, but if, if you actually go and network locally or if you actually are a bricks and mortar, um, offline market is definitely not dead. I mean, um, going back to talking about paid advertising, you know, pay, whether it's paid social like Facebook ads or it's like pay-per-click on, on Google AdWords. Um, you know, it, it, it can behoove some people to start with their local area, even if it's not really like a local business. Um, a, it's a lot cheaper. And B, you know, maybe, you know, in your particular case, you know, you provide a one-on-one -on -one service. And there's just people out there that would rather meet you by person or at least by phone. Um, to close the deal. I mean, I know that when I, you know, I hear, oh, you're in the Bay Area. That's hap that's where I live. It's like, oh, that's cool. We should meet for coffee. And so I think um, in-person contact is just still the most powerful way to build a relationship. And building those relationships, you know, they're part of marketing. You That relationship may turn into a joint venture. It may turn into a referral. Um, so I think um, you've got to do both, and um, it's a dance sometimes. <laughs> well, you know, it's interesting because the philosophy that, um, and I'm going to use the word direct marketers have, is the fact that now since more people are not mailing and more people are going online, the mailboxes are not as crowded as they were. So that when you do offline marketing, and especially if you do direct mail, people are paying greater attention to it because – they're not getting as much mail. So when they do get something and it's designed well and it appeals to them and they are the proper target, that they get much more results from the offline marketing than they ever thought they did before. So I think that's, that's an interesting uh, prospect. But what do you think is the key aspect of an online sales funnel? And, and maybe you need to explain a sales funnel uh, to our listeners. Right. Um, so an online sales, uh, let's start there. Um, so an online sales funnel is, um, here's, let me just give an example of one. So, um, and we both touched on it in our previous conversation. Um, it's, you know, let's say you get to a site and there's like, download my checklist. And it's like, okay, I, I'd love to download your checklist, you know, to figure out, okay, here are the seven ways you can close that that prospect. You know, so it's like a, a, a sales script or some kind of checklist. And so when you, you, when you download it, you actually give your name and email address up in exchange for downloading that, you know, sort of a... Uh, one kind of key piece of information that you are really interested in learning. And um, at that point, you're on that person's list, um, and an online sales funnel just basically can take that person through a series of conversations. You know, maybe at that point, when after they download that checklist, they may be offered, oh, maybe a low value product, you know, you know, well, 30 for seven, $37, you can get my audio that will teach you that sales script. Um, it's, you know, it has an interview. It, it really will help you refine your sales script when you're actually talking to a prospect on the phone. And then, um, you know, the, it, it's a dance between, you know, web pages um, that make offers, but also emails. Um, that once you're on the list that you'll get these periodic emails that will in encourage you to take some action. And that's usually clicking on something to get to a page that might offer, that might um, have you sign up for a webinar. That's a really popular part of funnels these days is to invite um, 
a prospect to a webinar. It might even invite somebody like a live event. I mean, we were just talking about um, you know, uh, people sort of ignoring the power of, of live contact, but I think people sort of still yearn for that. So I've seen funnels that, you know, particularly if they've focused on their local market, they've invited someone to a meetup or a live event so that um, you can have a more in-depth conversation with folks. And then, you know, when they make the offer or the webinar or the high ticket item, it makes more sense. Well, I, I certainly um, I certainly agree with you there. I mean, uh, so so out of all of that, out of all of that, what would you say is the biggest key? Do you think that um, getting them to do the first click is the, is the biggest key, or do you think and do you think the most effective is um, uh, something online that they click to, or do you think that emails are more effective? Oh boy, that I think that's kind of depending on the the business owner and you know what they're trying to sell. I tend to lean towards getting that first click, but you know it's really important to try to get the right person to click because uh, you can waste well, a lot of true, time. Otherwise, you just kind of have a bunch of people on your list, but they're never buying. Right, right, right. So, um, which is surprising and discouragingly <laughs> easy to do. Um, so, I mean, we, we forget that, you know, when we talk to people in person, um, you know, there's this, this process we go through, like, you know, is there chemistry there? Do we think we are fit? Do you have what I'm looking for? You know, do I think you'd be a good person to work with? And, y you know, you have to kind of model that somewhat online, which I think can be tricky to do sometimes. You know, when they did that first click and maybe they get on their list, um, you know, giving them content to read or our videos to watch, you know, that's, that's kind of modeling that in-person conversation. And it might be kind of more one way, but at least they can get a sense of you and just decide whether, oh, yeah, this person has interesting information. It's helpful for me. I've already implemented it in my business. You know, I, I want to deepen the relationship here. And I think that's, that's the tough thing to do is that people think, oh, yeah, it's just a matter of, you know, click, they get my lead magnet, and then I can just sort of slam them with, you know, um, you know offer after offer after offer. Well, y you know, it, when you meet somebody at a networking event, you don't immediately offer your service. You get to know them first. And I think it's really important to model a little bit of that getting to know you online, whether it's like, hey, follow, you know, come and join me on Twitter, or, you know, check out my videos um, I have on some key questions that I get a lot of the time. And then, then, they, then they're ready for that deeper relationship and possibly um, that sale. Yeah, you know, I, I have um, somebody I know who, who actually sends out three emails. They are nuggets of information, but uh, sends three e emails a day, and his following absolutely loves it. I mean, they just wait for his email. And others, if you do even one a day, they're, the people are furious, you know. So you really do have to know your, your, your market and your avatar. So how can a business owner get better results from their online marketing efforts? What's your opinion on that? Yes, I think it's as what I said. I, th I think it's helpful to think of online marketing as as a sales conversation. Um, I, I definitely think the key is you got to know your avatar. I, I think you got to start there. I mean, I, I'm working with a guy right now, and it, it's you know he he kind of wants to jump, ha have me jump into Facebook ads, and I'm kind of like, but 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 I don't know your people yet. <laughs> you know, I don't know your yeah, avatar, yeah. and yeah, how do how do I you know how do I know? I mean, it, it comes down to the colors I might choose to the ad, to the person that I might you know is the person older, you know what language do I use? What you, you, you know and and I mean it's I, I understand a lot. Uh, new business owners may not have all this information, but in that point, I think it's important to just start. I mean, it's going to be this trade-off between, you know, analysis paralysis, where you, you're like, okay, I don't have all the pieces, but as we talked about at the beginning of this conversation, you want to get that feedback. So, exactly. uh, 
as you, you know, so it, it's important to get started and it's important to go, okay, well, I'm going to do some advertising. I don't really have the perfect handle on my avatar, but let's do a series of ads and see which ones resonate. And after th that series of ads and you have one that maybe does better, it's like, okay, they told me something about my avatar, what they're really looking for. Um, for example, uh, I'm working with a client and he has four lead magnets. I mean, a lot of people, they'll do one lead magnet and then they'll stop. And a lead magnet is, of course, that, you know, it's also called ethical bribe where, you know, you get that free thing in exchange of giving up um, your email address. And, you know, it's, uh, it's probably true that you won't get that perfectly done the first time you create one. And he has four. That's true. He has four, and you know now I can take a look at his stats, and I can see that two of them outperform the other two. So guess which ones we're going to focus on? The two that that had the higher conversion rates. Uh huh. Absolutely. Well, so let me ask you now. Let's go in a different kind of different <laughs> path here with um, uh, you know the the social media. What's a top mistake that people make with social media? And I would think that. Um, well, that's a whole different conversation itself. I have someone who does my social media, and, uh, you know, I'm always poo-pooing this and poo-pooing that, and she's saying, oh, you don't know how important it is. So <laughs> what, um, what, what do you think? What is the biggest mistake that people make with social media? It's, you know, it goes back to that, ne that networking analogy that I just um, uh, shared. Um, you know, a lot of times what I see, particularly in the brands I worked with, you know, it's just broadcasting, you know, they're just broadcasting, you know, pushing their products. That's not really what you do with social e-media. It's really about, um, well, first of all, I think one thing is not, uh, not spending time in figuring out where your peeps hang out. You know, are you, are you, is it more pin Pinterest that you should go towards or Twitter? I mean, there's different sets of people that hang out in different types of social media. I mean, Facebook is kind of easy because almost everybody's there, so it's a good place to. It's a good testing ground, but once you brought, once you kind of go beyond Facebook, uh, you really need to know that your peeps are there. And when I say peeps, of course, I mean your prospects. And I think it's that that not thinking about social media as a conversation. It's really about you know you meet people at a party. That's kind of what social media is. And then, you know, if, when you get to know them a little better and it seems like you guys are sharing the same values and the same conversation, then maybe invite them over to your house, which is your blog. And then they can, you know, get to know, oh, wow, you know, this is, this is how they furnish it. This is kind of their state, their taste. This is kind of their style. Oh, I resonate with that. And it's kind of what your blog sometimes will do is people will kind of resonate with the way you write. Um, but yeah, I think it's um, not being, not figuring out which social media platforms work for their business, and I think it's just that they're broadcasting and not conversing. Those are the, those are two of the top mistakes I see. Well, now I want people to know how to get in touch with you because you're a wealth of knowledge, and I know that it's like the shoemaker has no shoes. You're working on a web page or a website, so I'm not sure which one you want them to go to. So where should they go to in order to find you? Um, they can go to yoursuccessfulwebsite.com, and okay. there will be a contact form there. Okay, so it's yours, your, your. Y O U R success, S U C C E S S F U L, successfulwebsite.com. Yoursuccessfulwebsite.com. Wow, fantastic. Well, I'll tell you something. You have been a wealth of information, Jackie Alice, and I will tell you that anybody listening should be uh, <laughs> ready, <laughs> ready and waiting. So um, I think that um, you'll get a lot of interest after this because people really are in a, um, uh, uh, a daze about what to do. And then there's always so many new things coming out every single day. You should do this, you should do that. And people jump on the bandwagon and then they don't know what they're doing and they confuse a lot of what they have already done. So uh, if you want to get in touch with Kathy, she is a wealth of information. She understands both geek and business fluently. And uh, her website is your successful website. Dot com. I want to thank you so much for being with us today, Kathy, and um, 
good luck to you. I know you're going to be in business for a long, long time. <laughs> okay. Well, thank you very much, and thanks for the opportunity to, to speak and, and chat. It was fun. Thank you.